Thank you. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah? Good. Okay. So you guys are at Arduino, Bluetooth, and Apache Cordova. This is the ABCs to loving mobile development. Um, I'm Lisa DeLuca. I'm a software engineer at IBM. I've been doing mobile development now for about a year and a half. Um, plus, outside of work, I was doing mobile for fun um, on the side for a while. But before that, I was doing cloud computing. Um, I'm based in Baltimore, Maryland. My Twitter handle is Lisa Seacat, so follow me. New, new followers today. Uh, you can find out more about me at lisaseacat.com, um, and hopefully you'll learn something new today about Arduino, Bluetooth, and Apache Cordova. So um, I wanted to, I think, I, I don't know if you guys have been following me on Twitter, but I, I mentioned that I'm going to be giving away a few books today. Um, we'll do the first challenge here in just a sec, so have your smartphones and, and tablets ready to do a, an internet search real quick. But um, in January of this year, I wrote a kid's book called A Robot Story, and it's teaching how to count to 10 in binary. Um, and I have them up here, and I'm giving them out today. So the first question for a book is, who's the first to tell me um, how much money I raised on Kickstarter? Just raise your hand and tell me how much, and you can win a free book. Yep. Yeah. No. <laughs> you can look it up. You can use kickstarter.com. Uh -huh. No. Yep. Wait, who said that? Yep. Yay. <laughs> Come get your book. So the, the quizzes are pretty easy. That's a warm up. <laughs> uh -huh. OK, so what is the problem? Wait, first, let me get a gauge of how, how many of you have done mobile development? Wow, a lot of you, OK. What about, um, do you do mostly native development? Raise your hand if you do only Android development. OK. What about only iOS development? So hybrid development. Lots of hybrid development, OK. Um, cool, so hopefully this isn't too beginner for most of you then. I'm, I'm going to give you a background about what Apache Cordova is and some of the problems around um, why you would use hybrid development versus native development. As you all know, there are lots of mobile operating systems out there. We have Android, iOS, Windows Phone, Blackberry, uh, you name it, there's a, a platform supporting a different type of phone. So um, this is a, a recent study in third quarter of this year showing the state of the developer nation. And it does a breakdown of all of the different programming languages that developers use. As you can see, 42% of people use Android. 32% um, are doing iOS development. And if you look at the breakout, the smaller circles around it, that's a breakdown of the languages that they're using for each of these platforms. So the dark gray areas, that's the hybrid development, the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So based on all this, Apache Cordova is the third most popular programming language for doing mobile development. So what is the problem? Why would you want to do hybrid development? Um, a lot of companies, especially big companies, will do the native development because they can afford to hire the skills that are native developers who are very specific in those code bases. But the cool thing about hybrid development is you can reuse some of those web-based skills that you already have, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Also doing native development, you need a, a Mac and a Windows machine, and then you have to also maintain separate code bases. So when you get a new feature, you have to um, develop that feature in both of the native features themselves. So the solution, Apache Cordova. So as I mentioned, um, Apache Cordova allows developers to use HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to build a mobile application that they can deploy across multiple platforms. So you write once, and you can deploy to Android, iOS, BlackBerry. Um, I have a list here of all the platforms that are supported. But a lot of developers refer to Cordova as PhoneGap. How many of you usually call it PhoneGap? Yeah. So does anyone know what the difference is? Yeah. Yep. No. Yep. So PhoneGap is built on top of Apache Cordova. It's Adobe's 
uh, proprietary um, use of the hybrid mobile development. So basically what they have is a build system on top of Cordova so that you don't have to package it yourself and, and do it yourself. But they are using Cordova under the cover. So as a developer, you, you kind of want to call it Apache Cordova, so change your mindset. Um, unless you are using their build tools and then you can call it PhoneGap. So a little history. In 2008 was when PhoneGap was created. It was created by a little company called Natobi. Um, when they first started, I believe it was a hackathon challenge where they wanted to show how you could write once and deploy to multiple platforms. And at that time, it was available for iPhone, Blackberry, and Android. In 2009, a lot of people started jumping on the bandwagon. Everyone wanted to do this hybrid development, um, but there was this, this turmoil of accept and reject. So people were writing mobile applications, but Apple was rejecting them from, from the Apple Store. So luckily today, that's no longer a problem, so you don't have to worry about if you're doing hybrid development. But in 2009, that was one of the big issues. 2010, um, people started seeing the, the potential of doing hybrid development, and so a lot of people got on board, and a lot of external companies, like IBM, for example, wanted to help and contribute as much as they can to make this something widely accepted. 2011, uh, growing pains, meaning that Adobe purchased this Natobi company, PhoneGap, and um, decided to contribute it back to Apache. So now it's open source, it's freely available, um, and the company had to go through the pains of being acquired into another company and then open sourcing. So that was version 1.0 of now uh, Apache Cordova. 2012, um, we got version 2.0, and over a million people downloaded Cordova. 2013, this was when a lot of fun changes happened with Cordova. Um, so this, this shows a breakdown of the changes between the 2.0 releases and the 3.0 release. 2.0, everything was packaged together. So if you wanted to write a mobile application and you were just gonna do camera, uh, you would still have all of the capabilities like the geolocation, for example, packaged into your app. So your app was just kind of heavy and had all this unnecessary stuff. So with 3.0, we broke it out. So now, as a developer, you can pick and choose which plugins you want to use and not have a, a heavy application. We also added um, this Cordova CLI. So now, from a command line, you can go and run, run um, adding new plugins and running the commands right there, which is really nice for developers. It's also moved to a node package module, so you can download it very quickly to your machines. So how does Cordova work? Um, you guys might already all know this, but every smartphone that you have comes already with a web browser. Um, typically, there's a, a web view is what we call it, which, which is just a browser that you can pull up within your mobile application. So how it would work is you have your, Java, your JavaScript, HTML, and CSS, and you can run that within the embedded browser within your mobile application. And then what it does behind the scenes is it's calling native APIs. So as a developer, you don't need to know the Java or the the objective C behind the covers, you just call the JavaScript layer and it does calls the native for you. So as I mentioned, there's a bunch of platforms that are supported by Cordova. Here's the list right now. And as, as uh, Dave mentioned in the keynote, Cordova's goal is to implement web standards. When it first came out, it aligned very closely with the W3C specs. Since then, the specs have changed, and um, Cordova is doing a, a good job of trying to come up to, to speed with what the specs have changed. But there is a little bit of misalignment. So that's one of the things that we're working on as a, as a community. I don't think I mentioned, but I'm a committer on the Apache Cordova project. So I get to work on this um, and contribute back to open source. But um, as Dave said, the goal of Cordova is to eventually go away. So as soon as the browsers catch up and can keep all of these, um, these web things that you want to do without this need for Cordova, then maybe Cordova will go away. Probably be a while from now, though. So as you can probably guess, based on the list of platforms that are supported, these are the companies that are contributing to Apache Cordova. So um, I'll give you guys a, a quick rundown of Cordova. It sounds like a lot of you already know all this. But to install Cordova, it's super easy. You use the npm package module, npm install-g Cordova. 
There are some platform specific setup that you would have to do um, for Android. You have to install the Android SDK, iOS, you have to have Xcode, um, and so on, as you can imagine. And creating a Cordova app is super easy. You just say Cordova create, and you give it a name. Uh, the rest of the parameters are optional. You can give it a package and give the name of the, the main starter application if you want. The dash D flag would be for if you want to debug the output. So to add a platform, um, also very easy. Cordova platform add iOS, for example. And then you can see the list of platforms that you have already added for your application by just doing the ls command. Cordova plugin. So um, I mentioned that with the 3.0 release of Cordova, we changed it so that the, the core plugins are separate from the core code. So you can pick and choose whichever of these things you want to add to your mobile application. There are 19 core plugins that are supported by Cordova. Um, I, I think the most popular one is the device one. We can, we can go look on the website. But here's a list of one of the, all the really popular ones right now. So this is the cool part about Cordova that I'm excited about, and I'm going to kind of talk to today with Arduino and Bluetooth. But um, it's possible for anyone to create a third-party plugin. Um, and you can make it, like if you have a company that already has iOS and Android SDKs, you can turn it into a Cordova plugin to make it so hybrid developers can come in and, and use the stuff that you're doing. So if you go to plugins.cordova.io, that's where you can see a list of all of the plugins that are available um, and all the neat things that you can do that are outside just the core plugins. So to install a plugin, uh, you just do Cordova plugin add, and then you do the package of the plugin name. And um, I'll show you guys how to, to go to the plugin, figure out what the plugin name is. Uh, but you would just go to the plugins.cordova.io site. And then once you add a plugin, you can make sure that it's installed. Just do Cordova plugin list. To build and run, um, Cordova build is, you, you'd use that if you were doing like uh, iOS development, but you don't really need to do that step if you're doing Android. If, just by running Cordova run in the platform name, that'll handle the build for you. If you wanted to run on an emulator um, uh, rather than a physical device, Cordova emulate and then the name of the platform. Okay, so let's do a quick demo showing off the camera. So um, depending on how fast the internet is, I know you guys are all searching here. So we can do Cordova, create, um, JQCon. OK, so now it created a, a new project for me called JQCon. So let's CD into that directory. And you can see that it creates um, a structure like this. So it has a hooks and mergers um, folders, which is more for advanced Cordova users. Platforms would list all the platforms that are installed. So let's go into platforms, and I'll show you what's installed. Nothing. So uh, let's add a platform. So we'll do Cordova platform add Android. So if I wanted to add the iOS platform, I, need, I would need to be on a Mac um, and have Xcode. OK, so now if I list, I see that I have Android installed. So um, the plugins directory, similar to platforms, it'll show you all the plugins that are installed, and I don't have any currently. And then the www directory is where you'd throw all your HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So let's open. I don't know if you guys can see this very well, but um, there's the www directory. You can see there's a folder called CSS. That's where the default style sheets are. Um, and there's an image directory, and then there's a JS directory. And you can rename these and have them whatever your preference is for doing development. Um, but this is just the very basic application. So let's see, how would we add a, a camera plugin? So if we don't know the package name of the plugin, you can go to plugins, Cordova IO, and the internet's not working. That's the problem.
Well, I happen to have the page already open. <laughs> so, um, so here is the, the plugins registry, and you can type in what you're looking for. So I would have typed in camera to find the list of all of the plug third-party plugins that are available for camera. And you can see the ones that are org.apache.cordova. Those are the ones from the official Cordova group. Um, and so if I wanted to install it, there's instructions on how to install Cordova plugin add and then the package name. So let's do that. So this is probably not going to work because my internet's not, yep, because the internet, it needs to pull the, the plugin from the internet, so it failed to fetch the package. So uh, it's okay, I'm prepared without the internet. I already have an app running with it pulled down. So um, I already created an application uh, called Camera Test. And then um, I'll show you what I did since I already cheated and did this beforehand. But all I did was I added an image tag um, and gave an ID of my image. And then I added a button called um, you know, Picture. And then it calls this method called Take Picture. And that's all I had to do on the HTML side of things. And then on the JavaScript side, um, I added a quick method called Take Picture. And all it calls is this navigator.camera.getPicture, and then it calls a success and a failure handle, handler. Um, and what's it, what's it going to do here is uh, take the picture and then save it to that image tag that I created before. So let's run it. Cordova run Android. So um, if you ever want to present and show off what your uh, device looks like, you can use this little tool called Droid at Screen. It's pretty neat. It basically reflects what, uh, whatever device is connected. It's a little slow, but it's pretty cool. OK, so here's the app I created. Uh, if I click the little pick, take a picture, button, and my Nexus doesn't have a camera in the back, so we'll get you guys here. Smile. Yay, how exciting. So we, we took a picture and we added it to the mobile app. <laughs> OK, so that's the, the quick Quick example of how to write a Cordova app. Um, Cordova is mostly the, the back end, so it's calling the camera APIs, it's calling the, the native features that you might want to do on your mobile app. It doesn't handle the user interface, so it's up to you as a developer to pick whatever you want to do as far as making the look and feel. So you could use jQuery UI, you could use Bootstrap top coat, you could use any framework that you enjoy working with. There are, um, are over 50 Git repositories for Cordova, so if you guys want to jump in and help out with the open source project, um, Cordova is always looking for good contributors. What's next for Cordova? So um, right now, the 3.6 release is about to be pushed out. Um, we're working on swappable web views. 
for Android, so you can not be stuck with the default web view that's, that's available for Android. Um, you can pick and choose whichever web view you want. Uh, we're also, as I mentioned before, doing API audits. We just did an audit um, for vibration, so now it aligns completely with the W3C spec, but we'll be looking at a, a few other specs too and making sure it's aligning perfectly. And then um, improved docs and translations. So that's something I'm passionate about um, as I lead the Cordova translation project. So if, if you want to contribute, come in, you can just go to crowdin.net slash project Cordova, and you can, if you speak another language besides English, you can help translate the documentation to other languages. So now, Arduino stuff. So uh, just to give you guys a background, I didn't know anything about hardware until this year. So in April, I went to an ApacheCon conference, and there was a guy there, um, Don Coleman, and he was giving a presentation on Arduino and Bluetooth, and I was so excited. I, I like went home and I made this, this little um, NeoPixel matrix and was drawing on it, and it's super easy to use. So I was a little intimidated at first to, to be around hardware type of stuff, because I'm more of a software person. But um, hopefully today you guys will be inspired too to, to go play with some Arduino stuff. So um, as far as the hardware goes, uh, I just bought, actually Don gave me his Arduino, but um, you can go to the Arduino website and get a, a just an Arduino board. This one has Bluetooth Classic on it, so it's an extra module that you put on top of the Arduino. Um, and then I bought this NeoPixel matrix, where did I put it, right here. Um, this is my first version of the Lightbrite, which I'm about to show you. But um, yeah, you just solder on a few uh, wires in the back. I mentioned which, which wires you needed to solder in. Um, and the ground, you put the ground in first to make sure you're not gonna blow up your, your hardware. And then you, you can pick whatever pin you wanna work with and, and work with the Arduino code itself. So I'll show you here in a sec. Actually, let's see here. All right, so um, let's see. So I made this quick little uh, mobile app that uses an HTML canvas to know where I'm at on the screen with my finger so I can draw um, and it lights up the lights as I'm drawing. So you can draw whatever you want. And then you can change the colors, and this is just a command that you'd send in to the Arduino over Bluetooth. But um, that's pretty cool. So I'm gonna pass this around, and you guys can draw things while I talk about it. Is this blinding you guys? Would you rather the filter be on it? Is this better? Okay. So um, to make this mobile app, I used Apache Cordova, and I also used um, a third-party plugin for Bluetooth Classic in order to write the code for the Arduino, because you have to do some hardware code. Most of the Arduino community is very open, so um, if you want to do something, you just Google, you know, how do I connect over Bluetooth Classic? And it'll show you some example code. In this example that um, I have here for the, the Lightbrite, um, there's just a method called setup Bluetooth. Uh, it's pretty easy language to work with. Um, most of this is copy and paste, though. It's not like you have to reinvent the wheel. Um, and then once you get the, the Bluetooth set up, then you have to, f to get information from the phone. So I send over a string to the, um, to the NeoPixel matrix through the Arduino, and the string tells it which, like you parse the string message to figure out what you wanna do with it. So in this case, I pass in like a string like this, so it has L, and then a, a number, and then the RGB values. So this would be like, I wanna light up the first light, and it's gonna be red. So um, as I mentioned, I used a third-party plugin for Cordova for Bluetooth Classic. If you do a search on um, the plugins.cordova site for Bluetooth, you'll see it. Uh, you, it's very simple to add, um, and then you can, from the, here, here we go, to install, 
you do just plug in install, just like you do any Cordova plug in install, and then the name of this one happens to be uh, Bluetooth Serial. So to send data over to the Arduino, uh, you just do Bluetooth serial dot write and then the string that you're sending over. Very simple. So for a book, who can tell me what would happen if I sent this string? Yeah? Which light? Uh, no. Third, who's the third? Right there, yep. All right. So this does look like a one, but it's L for the light, and then the number two would be the third light. So you can have a. Okay, so um, another fun one I have here. Let me turn it on. So um, in, in April of this year, I backed a Kickstarter project called Metaware. It's this really tiny board. It's about the size of a quarter. It's got a Bluetooth um, low energy. It's got an accelerometer to track your movement. It's got a temperature sensor. And you can also add additional sensors and lights to it. Um, anyway, so what I did was I made a, a cool application with it to have it glow based on tweets coming in. So if you tweet at the JQCon or Lisa Seacat, it'll make my little thing glow. Let me make sure it's working. But you can get one of these uh, things now um, through their website. This, it's called Ambient Labs. Uh, it's called a Metaware. It's only $36. It has a lot of really cool things. So I would recommend playing around with this before the Arduino. I think the Arduino is really cool, but it's kind of pricey. Um, and you can get the same stuff just from this tiny little thing and just start getting into hardware before you spend out a lot of money. So I actually turned off my app. Let me turn it on because I see you guys are tweeting. Looks like it ran out of batteries. Let's add some, plug in my necklace. Anyways, I'll have to play with it later. But um, here's some of the specs of the MetaWare. Um, like I said, Bluetooth low energy, so I have to use my Samsung phone. My Nexus 7 doesn't have low energy support yet. Um, they are also have some APIs available for Android and iOS, so if you want to do native-specific development, you can do that. And then the really cool part is I wrote a Cordova plugin, so you can go to Plugins Cordova IO and search for Lisa if you want, or Metaware, and you can get my Cordova plugin for the Metaware. Um, and then to interact with the metaware, it's super simple. You just say initialize, and you tell it your success and failure method, so what you want to do when it's connected. Um, and then you can set the LED color, so I set it to be blue, for example, and then you can hit the play button to play it. Very simple. I also create a little sample application for Cordova, so if you want to go to GitHub, um, El Deluca is my handle, you can download the metaware Cordova app. And then in order to do the Twitter streaming part, I created another Cordova plugin. Um, so again, if you go to Plugins Cordova IO, you can download the Twitter streaming plugin that I created. It's only available for Android right now. I need to, to beef up my iOS skills, but um, then I'll get that side to it. But for another book, 
If anyone can tell me how to install my Twitter streaming plugin, you can have the book. Yep, what is it? <laughs> yep. Yep, all right. Good job. Cordova plugin add com Lisa to get a Twitter. So you could use this if you want to do anything with the Twitter streaming API. Um, you don't have to do the hardware. <laughs> so to initialize the Twitter streaming API, um, you would just tell it what uh, hashtag you want to listen to. Um, you also pass in your OAuth credentials. So you go to Twitter and sign up, create an account, uh, create a little application, and you'll get your OAuth cr credentials. So. Back to Cordova, um, I mentioned a few times that there's all these third-party plugins. There are also a lot of really cool plugins that are starting to come out for connecting to the cloud. So if you want to do push notifications, for example, you can do a search on the plugins Cordova site for push, and it's really easy to add push notifications to your hybrid apps. Um, you can also add cloud-based storage. So if you wanted to synchronize data between your different mobile applications, very easy. Okay, um, that's all I had. Here's some useful links, documentation for Cordova. Follow me on Twitter um, and my GitHub if you want to see some cool examples I'm doing with Cordova. We also have an IBM booth outside um, where I'll be for the rest of the conference talking about some of the stuff we're doing around Bluemix. So that's, it's a, there's some Cordova plugins related to Bluemix if you wanted to get your data in the cloud that way as well. So is there any questions? I think I'm over time, but. No questions. Yep. Well, if you didn't want to pay for phone gap, <laughs> uh, I, I believe you have to pay. I think if you do a certain number, then you have to pay. I haven't looked that closely to it. But um, I mean, I like the control of doing it myself from the command line and then you know, creating the Android app myself and seeing the APK file and then uploading it to the store that way. Um, Do you know if you're keeping the source that you submit secure as far as it's You mean if, you, if I created a hybrid application and I submitted it to the store and someone downloaded it, are they able to open up the APK and see all the files? With the phone gap dot build, uh -huh. it, you have to submit your source in a zip file? And I, to me, that seems like something I'm worried about. Not that my code's all that great, but uh -huh. at, least, at least with using the CLI, it seems like you don't have that concern. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I don't use PhoneGap build. Um, I do it all myself. So yeah, I, I could see how that would be a concern, uploading your source. Any other questions? I think I missed it along the way somewhere, but how do we get access to like this online? I mean, going through, I could write down all these different links, but uh -huh. is there somewhere we can access the information for the conference? I, I assume I someone from the jQuery conference could answer that question, but I know it's being recorded, so right. you'll be able to watch the replay. Um, but you can also send me an email or tweet okay. at me, and I'll send it to you. Great, thank you. Uh, phone gap is built on the top of Cordova, right? So um, when the question is, is there anything that you can't do for a hybrid application that you could do with native? Yeah, yeah so as new features come out from the native platforms, oh, like nice. iOS just announced some, some features that they were doing. Um, there's the rich push notifications. That's not available yet on hybrid, but eventually the Cordova community, once we have access to those APIs, we'll be able to add those features. 
So as, it's mostly just playing catch up a little bit with some of the native APIs. Anything that the, so the question is, um, can we do anything you do on the web within a hybrid application? And um, I, you just have to play with it. I haven't ran into anything myself that, you, that has been an issue. Um, the Stack Overflow Cordova tag would be what, like if you had any questions, I would go on Stack Overflow and question, um, enter your question there and tag it with Cordova. And the Cordova committers are all watching those. So they'll go and uh, answer the questions. Uh, yes. Phone gap is built on the top of Cordova, and so as uh, uh, as there are new releases with Cordova, does Phone gap upgrade itself? Um, I'm sorry, I missed the question. So the uh, Phone gap is built on the top of Cordova, right? Yep. And, and there are new releases of Cordova all the time. Yep. So does uh, does Phone gap upgrade itself with the new releases? Yes. Yep. There are a lot of um, people on the. Cordova committer list who are from Adobe that are doing specific things that they want to see in the phone gap releases. So they are very much on top of it. I think within a couple hours of Cordova releasing, the Adobe team releases their phone gap build. I think I'm over time, but um, please find me at the IBM booth or send me a message and I'll answer any other questions then. Thank you.